Okay, thank you everybody. Um, so what I want to do is tell you a little bit around um, my latest toy that I played with. Um, not a discovery, unfortunately it was a um, previous company that I was working at. Uh, it was also one of the bluish banks. Um, <laughs> and uh, so w what we did there is um, we, t we tried them to help them to become more agile, bus introduce business agility through um, w what we talk about as a relentless improvement organizational capability. So um, I was involved as an enterprise coach there, um, big title, but I was working mostly with um, leadership, management, um, C-level executives. I was working together with an agile coach who was more focused on a team level, working with teams there. Um, but we had a great team, and we um, did some great stuff, I believe, that I want to share with you today. So, um, unfortunately, I only have two years of looking back. I know that um, Evan said you need eight years before you can say this is working or not. Um, so, maybe after six years I'll come back, and we can talk about this again. But for now, let me... Just look at the agenda. So what I want to do is just talk about relentless improvement as key to business agility. Um, so um, it's one of those small little things that just makes it all work. And also uh, valuing a culture of relentless improvement and relentless improvement as this organizational capability. And we can leave some time for questions. You've seen this picture before. So um, it just comes from a domains. Um, Evan was talking about this a lot, and I, I really tried to think where does relentless improvement fit into all of this, and I came to the conclusion that it fits everywhere. Because if we look, um, I was really working with leadership. Um, we were also as a team working with the individuals, um, but we had the um, operations and support also making that part of it. So it was an all-inclusive um, um, uh, thing. And, um, so the Business Agility Report comes out every year. It's done by the Business Agility Institute, Evan's team. What they found is over time that there's um, three predictive indicators of business agility. The one is funding models, second one value streams, and the other one is um, relentless improvement. Have they see relentless improvement as by encouraging a culture of learning and experimentation to thrive, organizations will continuously improve both what they do and, more importantly, how they do it. Um, so what I want to talk to you about is how we change this, how we do it, um, as part of a continuous improvement effort. Uh, so um, over time, we've come to value five things um, regarding um, relentless improvement and it's not something that was very clear right from the start over maybe a period of two years these things became much more clear in our minds and and th those are the important things so the first one is um, learning from each other's success that was quite obvious from the start um, we wanted to be create this um, opportunity or ability for people to learn from each other um, before that, we, we really struggled with um, improvement or continuous improvement as just a mechanical kind of thing where people would come and say, we want to improve this and this and this. But this learning from one another um, was really imp important. Um, so when I came there, there was already communities of practices or guilds, um, lean coffees that was already running there, but people were not really getting the value from that. Um, it was one of the um, C-level executives' um, strategic objective to embed a culture of continuous improvement. And at that stage, we were not happy with the results that we were seeing from this. Um, th there was activities happening, but it didn't all pull together in something that they can see that was working. It's something more like an engine that was um, spewing out more um, improvements. And then um, continuous improvement of uh, new ways of working. So one thing that we found is um, it's very difficult to change culture. I don't know if you've had any experience with that. 
Um, <laughs> well, a friend of mine described culture as something with a round thing that's very difficult to get hold of. And if you want to roll that thing, it's just very difficult to do that. So um, what we decided to rather focus on is on the way of work. Now, if you think about culture as the way we do things here, then it makes sense that the way of work is a good substitute for that. Okay? So we rather focused on the way of work and improving that as opposed to trying to change the culture of um, continuous improvement. Um, and then also planning to improve. Creating capacity for improvements seemed to be a huge problem from the start. When we got there, the CEO said, yes, you can do all those wonderful things, I will pay for that, but it must not impact projects. Um, and, and that um, proved to be a bit of a dilemma for all of us, in a sense that um, the moment that project pre pressure started building up, then improvement is out of the door. Uh, so we had to find some innovative ways to create this capacity um, and, and I think we got it right in the end um, to do that. I'll talk more about that. Then guided continuous improvement as opposed to just let continuous improvement go in any direction. S sometimes, um, especially leaders, have got a vision. They want something to go in a certain direction. They know what they want, but they've got this um, engine that just spewing out anything and they're not happy with that. So one thing that we've learned is to pull management or leadership into this whole process of continuous improvement and make them part of it. That was very important. Um, and then around guided continuous improvement, also to look at, um, at, at, at how do we do it. So one way to think about it is to get industry experts in or people that have done this before or know their, their, their craft and use them. Yeah, so, at, at um, Outlined, we used um, enterprise and team level coaches. Then there's another one, which is a toolkit. Because sometimes what happens, and I've seen it with many teams that try to improve, is after a year they run out of good ideas. Right? And then um, the improvement becomes second best, and they're not improving anymore. You, you need to keep the momentum going in some way. I've also seen teams that self-organize, big word in an agile community, um, that self-organize, in my opinion, in a very destructive way. They don't self-organize in a best optimal way to do things. And having somebody from outside or having a, just a bunch of good ideas in a toolkit can help a team to go into the right direction. So if they don't reinvent the wheel, there's lots of other people that have done this before, and you can get a lot of good help in, in that. So thinking about this um, continuous improvement, um, many times when we introduce change, it will look something like this. There's going to be some productivity dip initially. And then after a while, people are coming out of a trough of disillusionment, they will go up and they will make plans, they get ideas on how to improve, and then things start to go better. Um, but what you'll find is after a while, it Plato out, and then the improvement stops. It kind of run out of steam, and that's not what you want. Um, and opposed to that, another school of thought is just, we're going to continuously improve, so there might be a little bit of a dip in productivity, but then people keep on improving. Um, what we want to do is supercharge this, con this improvement. Um, by giving people the tools, the help, everything that they need in order to improve continuously. And that's the whole idea of guided continuous improvement. Sometimes what you find is that um, there's been some kind of transformation program, maybe adoption of SAFE or any other framework. Then what people will go through this, and at some stage they're going to plateau out, and then we can use this guided continuous improvement capability in the organization to jumpstart that and get it going again. And this is exactly what happened at, um, at, at my, my customer. They've been through an agile transformation. Um, they came out of it and they said, basically, what now? What, what do we do? How do we improve now going forward? Um, so, and that's where we got involved and um, talked about 
continuous improvement to them. Yeah. So typically what you'll see is that an organization's trying to introduce change, maybe to become more agile into what we do, introducing business agility, go through some kind of transformation program. But that transformation program tends to run out of steam or what we want it is to close down. Okay. It might be historical, it might be the way that we plan it in our organization, but it should be followed by this continuous improvement that had continued to happen as a second part to our initiative. So if you forget everything today that I've said, and you just keep this in mind, that um, a transformation program should not finish. Okay. It takes eight years, as Evan said, but what do we fill that extra two or four or six years with? And that's where we come in with this continuous improvement or relentlessly trying to improve. So another thing we valued is um, to pull improvements when capacity is available. Typically in organizations, when we think about um, transformation program, we create our plan, we decide what are all the changes that need to happen, then we go to the teams and tell them, you have to change now. And the teams are all different, they have different contexts, they're doing different things, um, different priorities. And some of them can do it, some of them ca cannot. So what we've learned is we, not to tell people you have to change now, but we create a backlog of improvements and then get the teams to pull the improvements when they're ready for it. Uh, so teams can do the same improvement over different, in, in different time frames when it suits them. And that was a, a, a big value that we learned and we um, built our process um, and our capabilities around that. So um, how do we put it all together? Putting it all together, basically this is a picture of a capability that we tried to, um, to, to introduce. So we had business leadership starting um, having their strategy, their ideas, what they want and where they see the business is going. Um, identifying at a very high level what are the improvements that they would like to see. Okay. Um, these improvements we would put on a backlog, just a to-do list basically. Um, we, we identified an owner inside of an organization, in our case it was the CIO, um, and, and he would then prioritize the, the improvements for everybody else. Okay. But these improvements are not improvements that have to be done. These are proposed. Okay. We would look at it as um, maybe a list of good ideas coming from management. We'll take it in account and we'll see how we can make it happen. Then we had a team, which was a base team. The base team was um, a guiding coalition. The guiding coalition, what they would do, it consisted of um, C CIO, who was the owner of a backlog. Um, we had other roles, for instance, development managers, the test manager, um, and um, scrum masters, other agile coaches. Everybody involved in guiding this from a leadership perspective was involved in this base team. We would get together once every week initially. Later on, we um, made it once every two weeks. And then discuss the improvements that was identified there. We would also come up with our own improvements, looking at that and say, based on our understanding of um, what management wanted, how can we do that? Also understanding where the teams are and what are the problems that they're struggling with. Um, we, we identified some improvements. Um, and then what would happen is we would agree within all of us what are the next improvement to do. Yeah. And these then become what we would put out as planned improvements. So what would happen is the teams would then in the planning sessions, they would take that and then decide which ones they have capacity for now um, and what they can do um, in, in the time frame, let's say in the next week or two weeks. Um, and then what they would do is 
um, with team leadership. Let's say we were product owners or scrum masters that was part of a base meeting. They would take it to the team in a planning session. They would plan for the one or two that they can take on, um, which they would then, in their normal cycle of doing things, they would take on and they, they do the improvement. The idea is that they would then, um, the improvements would be done. Um, and these improvements that's done and have shown some results is what members of a team, anybody can take to the lean coffees or the community of practice, the guilds. And in a the guilds, they would start to share it. They would have a dialogue around it, talk to other teams. This worked for us. What worked for you? And through that dialogue, they would come up with potentially more improvements or improvements to share. Uh, it might be that a one team said, what you did around planning really worked well. We would like to do that as well. It then goes onto the backlog again. Okay? It's being reprioritized in a sense of um, the other priorities and how we do that. And then um, we would, at a base meeting, discuss that again, and the teams would push it down. So what you find here is a kind of reinforcing um, system that makes f and helped us to build up speed over time. Definitely something that I could see is um, how the speed improved in terms of how many changes people brought in. Initially, when we started, we, um, we really struggled to get the teams just to pull any of the improvements. The teams had high pressure um, to deliver project work. Um, lots of excuses why they would not be able to do it. Um, and all valid excuses, not saying that they're malicious in this, but um, in, in their world, other things had taken higher priority. Um, but with the um, support of leadership, especially from the um, um, C executives, you know, we started to get this thing going, and teams would start to pull one by one some of the initiatives and started to execute the improvement. These improvements, maybe one team would look at this and they would say, well, th this worked great for us, or maybe they didn't. Initially, we, we had good guidance from the coaches, and the coaches helped them to choose things that would have a high impact in their life. We, we shared it in the lean coffees, um, and it created that good discussion going. Um, also, lots of new insights that was created based on that, which was brought back to the base team, who was then reacting to that. Um, so just to give an example of one of the things that we did is we, we looked at the planning. Of course, in agile world, everybody worries about planning because it never seems to work out. It never worked in a waterfall world or any other one, we, we always struggle with planning. So um, we started looking at how we can um, create this um, planning process. And one of the first um, um, improvements that we identified was what was called big room planning. Big room planning is really where a team of team get together and they do planning. Um, and, and so it's uh, one day, everybody, we had um, six teams get together planning around what we're going to deliver in the next month. So commit a month, plan for 90 days. So it was a rolling wave planning, which is also part of a change that we brought in. Um, so, and, and we put it on a backlog there for improvement. It was pulled by three of the teams. Um, and we, we started generating the interest in that. In the end, all six teams was, was doing this. But only after, for instance, the compliance team had a compliance emergency, something that was really important, as always is in their life, that they had to bring in. Um, and they had to spend their time on something else. But in the end, they also um, started to participate into this big room planning. Um, so, if we think about this as change management in an organization, so the idea is that we are introducing change and we're changing the organization to become more agile. Um, how did it work for us? I mentioned before we didn't start out like this, but what happened is we improved our improvement process. 
and it became better all the time. We had lots of discussions in a base team on how this thing should work. Um, initially, we, we had a trying to push it down on the teams and tell them, you will do it this way. Luckily, we had a CIO that had lots of foresight and understanding of what he wanted, and he understood the teams where they are, what are the problems they're struggling with, especially around um, the pressure to deliver in terms of projects. So he insisted on this improvement um, and the pool mechanism to, to work that way. And that was something that, um, in the end, proved to be really valuable. It kept the momentum going in a, in a time where there was no capacity actually for doing improvements. Um, and also, we, we looked at this as a, as continuous improvement as opposed to a transformation program, where typically you would have a, a team of people, um, some kind of center of excellence that decided, we will decide for the people what they need to improve. Um, in this, the base team was not really telling everybody else what they must do. We came up with good suggestions based on a strategy that we had, but we involved leadership and the individuals on the teams in this effort of identifying what to improve. Uh, there's um, a dictate in change management, uh, those that um, are being affected by the improvement or the change should create the change. Uh, and that's something that we try to do in all of us. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and then what we did is we, we, we captured the changes as improvements. Creating that visibility on a backlog um, helped us to move forward. Because what happened is, in the end, the leadership started realizing that there is valuable work that gets done, because now it's visible. We can see what, we, what the teams are doing. Um, they had to prioritize it. And also, by prioritizing it, they started realizing we need to make space for the teams. We need to create capacity for these teams to actually be able to do this valuable work. Okay, so that was a big win for us um, in terms of this, is that realization specifically. Yeah, it created opportunities to discuss um, improvement of um, our way of work. Um, if you were there when we started out, the conversations in the teams and everybody was driven by project work, what we need to do, when we deliver it. Um, what we started seeing at the end of this is conversations around our way of work and how do we improve it, what can we do and how do we share it between different people, um, what are the learnings from that. So that is something that came out at different levels, leadership level as well as the team level. And the leadership level through the um, base team but the team level through the team planning sessions, you could observe and you could see that there are people um, talking about improvements in a retrospectives, talking about improvements, lean coffee sessions, talking about these improvements. So getting that conversation about um, improvement going, that was also a big win at the end of the day. Yeah, so um, did we find some success through the cultural values? Yes, we did. Um, so we learned from each other's success. You know, through these conversations, we, we, we learned a lot from one another. Uh, certain teams were, in the end, we, we could see that team members were going to other teams and actually talk about how they improved it, uh, which is not something that normally um, happens without the structure around it. So this is kind of an informal process in, in sharing um, that knowledge. And if you talk about the learning organization, that's the kind of thing that we started seeing doing, ha happening. Um, the um, way of work became much more visible. Okay? For the teams talking about it, for the leadership and management also talking about it, it became something that there was lots of conversations around it. So it, it did become important. Uh, planning to improve, capacity to improve, um, that's really a big win. The, um, in terms of guided continuous improvement, we, we found that people and the team started asking for coaching, as opposed to the coaches having to go to the team and tell them, now you have to do this, now you have to do that. 
Um, it became more a pool process. Um, and over time, we were able to move away as, as coaches, which also worked well. So, um, and pool improvement when capacity is available, no excuses anymore, a change of a conversation around um, we cannot do this towards when will we be able to do it, um, which also in terms of a growth mindset helped um, to, to get these improvements going. Yeah, so um, for myself, reflecting a little bit around um, all of this, did it work? I'm now, now sitting back and I did this while being part of Indigo Cube. Currently, I'm with, um, I moved towards Discovery. I'm working there. So something that I've learned from this is that if you go to somebody and say, can I help you to improve? Nobody will say no. But if you were to say, let's help you to become more agile, or let's help you to be, do Scrum, or let's you help you to do that, you always have a all closed or semi-open door. With continuous improvement or relentless improvement, having the conversation around how do we help you to improve, you always find the open door, okay, which is a good start from all of us. And thank you. Any questions?